does time mean to you? Well, today we are going to be talking about clocks and telling time. So what are some of the ways that we measure time? Well, initially people used to use sundials to track the sun and its movements to tell the time throughout the day. Now, more frequently, we use analog or digital clocks. These can be in the form of watches. You might see digital clocks on an oven or microwave or on a phone. You might see an analog clock up on the wall somewhere. So lots of different types of ways that we can tell time. Now there are two types of clocks that I have mentioned. There is the digital clock and the analog clock. Now on an analog clock, there are moving hands, small and big hands that go around the clock. And normally on the outside of the clock are numbers one to 12, and those represent the hours in the day. The other type of clock is a digital clock. And this, we have the hours on the left side of the colon, and we have the minutes on the right side of the colon. So these are the two types of clocks, analog and digital. Now let's review some things about telling time and clocks that you should already know. As I mentioned on analog clocks, there are hands moving around the clock. Now, can anyone guess what the big hand measures? If you guess minutes, you're right. The big hand measures minutes all around the clock. And the small hand, however, what does that measure? Well, it measures the hours. So you need both to tell the time. So you can tell the hours and the minutes. Now, how many minutes are in an hour? How many minutes are on a clock? Well, if you were to go and count all the minutes on a clock, often there's little notches between all the numbers, you would see that there are 60 minutes in every hour. And how many hours do we have in a day? Well, 24. So 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day. And using this, we can tell time. Finally, as I mentioned, especially on analog clocks that have the hours labeled, they don't have the minutes labeled. And it would take us a lot of time to go and count all the notches around the clock. So what's an easier way to do that? Well, we can count by fives. For every hour, for every number on the clock is five minutes. So we would count 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and 60, right? Because there's 60 minutes on the clock. So if you saw the big hand pointing to the two, and you counted by fives up to the two, that would be five, 10, then the minutes would be 10, so 10 minutes. But we don't just count by fives when we are talking about clock. We also use quarters and halves. Now, when we're talking about quarters and halves, you might think we're talking about fractions. And actually, clocks have a lot of ways that we can measure them that are similar to fractions. If you were to look at an analog clock and split it in half right down the middle, then you would get to the six, which is also the 30 minute mark, right? And if you think about there being 60 minutes in an hour, half of 60 is 30, right? So if you would say you have half an hour to finish this worksheet, that means you have 30 minutes. Or if someone says it's half past five, that means it's 530. We don't just use halves though, right? We also use quarters. So if you were to look at an analog clock again and split it in quarters, like so, and we know that there are four quarters in one hole, right? We know there's four quarters in a dollar. There's also four quarters in just one hole, then we can also cut up a clock the same way. And the four quarters are each equal to 15 minutes. So if you were to look from the 12 to the three on an analog clock, you would know that that's a 15 minute amount of time. And there's four sets of 15 minutes to get to 60, right? So 15, 30, 45, and 60. So if you were to say it's a quarter to five, then you would also be saying that it's 445. If you would say it's a quarter past one, you're saying it's 115, right? So we use quarters and halves to describe the time, to measure time, and to also interpret how we look at clocks. Let's try out these practice problems. Abby spent 22 minutes working on her science project yesterday and 34 minutes working on it today. How many minutes did she spend on her project altogether? Well, if we add up the amount of time she spent, 22 minutes yesterday and 34 minutes today, we'll get 56 minutes. So Abby spent 56 minutes working on her science project in all. Marcus wants to watch a movie that starts at 2.55 p.m. It takes 10 minutes to drive to the theater. Marcus also has 30 minutes of homework to do before the movie. If he starts his homework at 2 o'clock p.m., will he make it to the theater on time? Let's work backwards. We know that the movie starts at 2.55. And if he needs 10 minutes to drive there, then he needs to leave at 2.45 p.m. We also know he has 30 minutes of homework. 
If we were to subtract 30 minutes from 2.45, it would get us to 2.15. But lucky for us, Marcus is starting even earlier than that. He's starting at 2 p.m. He'll have plenty of time to make it to the movie. Okay, we did some practice problems. Let's see how this quiz turns out. Try it out. Mara had an appointment at the dentist's office yesterday at 11.30 a.m. The dentist called Mara in right on time. She was out of the office 25 minutes later. What time did Mara leave the dentist's office? Patrick stopped at Polygon Cafe for lunch. He stayed there until he had to leave and meet his friend at the Foster Beach. They were meeting at 1.30 p.m. Foster Beach is a 20-minute walk from Polygon Cafe. What time did Patrick have to leave the restaurant in order to get to the beach right on time? Kara, an employee at Candiality, has to put together six bags of candy before she leaves for the day. It takes her 10 minutes to pack each candy bag. If she starts packing at 5.45 p.m., what time will she be finished making the bags of candy? Which clock shows 5.10 p.m.? Which clock shows 6.30 a.m.? Thanks for watching.